Hello and welcome to this GP feature overview for Microsoft Dynamics GP emailing sales order processing documents. Today we're going to give you a user guide on how to email sales order processing documents. I am assuming that you have already done the setup for email, but let's go over those steps real quick. First step is to activate your Word templates. Um, the next step is to set up a default template. This can be assigned per company, per company class, or even down to particular customers if necessary. You're going to modify your template as needed. Notice there is an asterisk or a star here. The reason being is if you've used Microsoft Dynamics GP before GP 2010 or even in 2010 and you're on 2013 now, you're going to want to start fresh with a new copy and report writer and redo all of your changes. So that is a bit of a hurdle for existing customers and talk to your partner about how to take care of that. You're going to want to do your email settings here in the company. You're going to set up some email messages, which we'll look at briefly a little later. You're going to want to go to sales email and do some generic settings on that. And then you want to go to the, each individual customer and set that up or do maths off the navigation list. And we're going to touch on the e customer settings a little bit later also. Again, we are more focusing on a user guide. There are lots of videos out there on how to do some of those setup steps. Here we are in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 Service Pack 2. There's a couple features I'm showing that are special to that version, but most of everything is um, unchanged since GP 2010, unless I mention otherwise. Here we are. I'm going to go to the Sales tab, and I'm going to go to Sales Transaction Entry. You can also do emailing out of receivables and statements, but we're not going to talk about that today. Here we are on a particular order. Um, and you'll notice our emailing buttons here and here. So this emailing button allows you to see what it is going to come out on. So I can click that and notice that I have a to address and I've got a message ID. I can make one time only changes to this right here for this particular sales order. Or I can make permanent changes to my message ID by clicking the link. That opens my message ID. These are, again are assigned on a per document or a per customer basis, which we'll see in a minute. Here's our subject. Notice I've put some conditional fields in here. There are all sorts of variable fields that you can insert into. And then I have my body of my message. I can have a generic reply to address set up so that when someone hits reply to, it does not come back to my personal email address. It comes to the system email address, this one that's set up. And this is a good time to talk about the Exchange logon. So when you click into these features, every time you launch GP, this screen is going to pop up. What this is, it's going to ask for my password because these emails are going to go out using my email address out of my Exchange or my Microsoft Outlook. So I need to log on. Um, I'm going to be shown as the sender on these documents. So I put in my password. Now let me show you where the customer setup is. So if I go to the customer ID link here, um, the email addresses are coming in off the bill to address ID. So if I hit link to the bill to address ID, this globe right here is where the email address is. So this 2CC and BC email address is what's going to be used on default by new documents being set up. And so if I'm on my document, I can send just a single email by doing the send document email and out it goes. Here is the email address that it sent out. You'll notice I'm the sender. There's my attachment, and here's my document. This particular document I was sending out as a Word document, but I also could have sent it out as a PDF. Let's look at that. So you might come into a document and notice that your emailing is grayed out. That's because that customer setup has not been done. So on the customer ID, customer maintenance. Again, I could have gone via cards, but I went through the hot link. There is this email button. So on the email button, this is where you specify what documents are allowed to be set up, what message ID is going to be used, and what format it's going to be sent out. So I'm going to turn on sales order, and I am going to turn on the PDF. Up here are multiple attachments, so you can send these out in bulk. I'll show you that in a moment, and then that's where um, whether you want multiple attachments to come out will happen. And then up here you can embed it or as an attachment. 
So now that I save these changes and I move off the sales order and back on, you will notice that the buttons are no longer grayed out. I can now send this document. And here is the PDF of that order. Remember that you can modify this word template, have it look differently, have different logos, etc. Now, rather than sending them one by one, you can send them either in the print sales documents right here, send document via email, or off the sales batches. And so if you pull up a particular batch ID and you go to the print icon, helps to find one that actually has documents, um, you can do send documents by email based on what type of document you select. Now one interesting feature that they added in 2013 is that when you email out a batch of invoices it actually changes the batch ID to, to email. It also will spit out a log of where its errors or problems are. And that will allow you then to print the hard copies of the documents that are left. I hope you've enjoyed our user guide on how to email sales order processing documents. Remember that those documents are available in GP 2013 for quotes, orders, invoices, returns, packing slips, receivables documents, and customer statements. In GP 2010, you do not have the returns and the customer statements, but you do have the orders, the quotes, and the invoices. Take care and have a good day.